Good Tuesday morning. Welcome back to Breakfast Television. Devo Brown here with you. And joining me right now is Mr. Mike Eppel from the City News 680 Business Center. Good morning, sir. Hello there, Devo. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing well, thanks. Did you get a lot of sleep last night? You see where I'm going with this? I did, but apparently a lot of Canadians did not. Mm -hmm. um, very interesting survey in this morning from FP Canada, Financial Planners Canada, talking about how much uh, the high inflation and high interest rate environment is stressing out Canadian households to the max, Devo. We talked a little bit about this yesterday, about how uh, the debt loads of Canadian households right now have gone up and up and up. Mm -hmm. And Canadians are losing sleep, according to this FP Canada survey. One in two, 48% of Canadians say that they have lost sleep this year because of financial stress, anxiety, mental health, depression, all tied to money is one of the uh, big contributors to stress so far for the this year. And it's way up, at, coincidentally, or not, maybe, maybe not, from a year ago. What were we looking at at the start of 2022? low interest rates and inflation starting to move significantly higher. So it's all correlated to the amount of debt that's uh, owed and uh, uh, Canadians having big troubles paying the bills. And tomorrow we're going to get probably another interest rate hike by the Bank of Canada, which isn't going to help at all. Mike, you're talking about right? Canadians having a hard time. Yeah, paying those bills. Look, I'm just one mm -hmm. person in my household, single person household. When I speak to my friends who have two, three kids, I just... It's hard, you know, I try to empathize with them because there is so mm -hmm. many expenses, so many expenses that they got to go through. Mm -hmm. And summer break, you want to get your kid to camp. You want to go to amusement parks or whatever it might be. It's just, it is hard out there for and everything, everyone right Everything now. has yeah. gotten more expensive. It just, it's, you know, so much more to do all those things. Costs a lot, and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and you want to do the things that we were doing and then all of a sudden you can't you can't afford it and you you throw it on plastic but that just causes uh, more problems down the road yeah as you mentioned that debt that's uh, collecting uh, and so the, the, the point to this whole thing is about working with a financial planner that does help the numbers do show that if you've got someone kind of looking over things for you mm -hmm. uh you know to kind of chart a path i think is the is the the idea here that does alleviate some of the financial stress yeah get yourself a strategy in there as well for sure mm -hmm. uh post media and toronto star uh owners mm -hmm. uh what is it nordstar uh they're ending their yeah. merger negotiations because i remember when i heard about this i was like whoa this is mm -hmm. a this is a big deal well you've got two uh you know politically political rivals from a from a publication standpoint a journalistic standpoint the uh, national post versus the toronto star and then this headline about them talking about uh, teaming up and and putting together all of these newspapers including the toronto sun and now they're not. They called it off, couldn't reach a deal. And it just raises some questions here, Devo, I think, about, you know, what's what's the future of the National Post, for example? The reason they were talking about this is that we're seeing in the the uh, newsprint industry right now, journalism in general, uh, it's not a secret that uh, the U.S. owners of the National Post and the Toronto Sun have a lot of debt and they're paying a lot of interest on that. And they got to restructure, so there's going to be there's another shoe to drop. Unfortunately, for this, I just look back at the day, Devo, when you know what? Um, one of my favorite segments on on BT uh, was when uh, you know the late Bob Hunter would would talk, uh, you know, wear his bathrobe and read the morning papers and go through the <laughs> go through the the headlines and comment on it. I mean, that that was awesome. I I. I I'd, I'd bring back that segment if I could get a newspaper delivered to me at this well, time of the morning. That's it. That's, that's, you know, back in my day, I used to deliver that Toronto Star throughout See? my building in my neighborhood. And, See? boy, those papers were heavy on a Saturday, let me tell you, when all those flyers were getting put in there. Uh, all right, Mike, uh, one last thing right here. Let's move mm -hmm. over to the movies because there's a lot of blockbusters yes. coming up this month. Uh, Cineplex increasing some revenue. Yeah, I thought this was an interesting uh, report by Cineplex talking about how there's been a lot of big box blockbusters this year, Devo, and how this has got people coming back to the theaters. They're at 98% of the revenue in June that they done of what they saw in 2019. So we're back up to pre-pandemic numbers for the movie theater industry. That's great. But I think there's a trend, a changing trend here. Have you noticed that a movie. I, I think that's you know because people if you if you're big into movies you go see that on opening weekend or the mm -hmm. first week and then it others are like I can wait I, I can wait until it comes out on streaming 
<laughs> kind of like your feet. It was no, dipping seriously. in and out. I know I know what you're saying right there. Yes, it does. Yeah, yeah no, no. It, it hits you early it's, and it's, then, it's, 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 yeah. Yeah. Drops it, down. Well, look at, look at what was number one this weekend. Insidious, you know, surpassed Indiana Jones, which I think was at number one, mm -hmm. like, for just one week. And prior to that, we saw, you know, Spider-Man, Spider-Verse did really well. Barbie, Oppenheimer, Mission Impossible, that's coming out. Those are all going to be huge for the, the movie theater industry. But again, do you go see it on the big screen or do you wait until it comes out on on the streaming service? I'll be honest, all three yeah. of those I think you need to see on the big screen, Mike Apple. And I think you're first in line for Barbie, sir. I believe it. Good time for your I, screen to freeze I, right there. I am Ken. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Thanks. <laughs> it's like uh, Ken. Appreciate you. You are my Ken, Mike Apple. We will join you again tomorrow. <laughs> appreciate you, man. Have a great day. <laughs> Thank you.